Good morning. I want to welcome you if you're here with us in person or in the chapel or online at home or in one of our prisons around the country. Uh, let me give you a little bit of a disclaimer. Next week, I promise, we're back in Revelation. I promise you. This is a, we have to do this, and I'll tell you why. Because uh, the old adage, you know, if you aim at nothing, you're going to hit it every time, right? And if you don't know where you're going, then you're always wondering, where are we heading and, and are we going to get there? And so I think this is crucial for us to know where God is leading us uh, in the days ahead. Uh, I was thinking uh, as last night as I was praying for Israel, and by the way, uh, I believe uh, when I see scripture that God is not done with Israel, by the way. I don't believe in something called replacement theology that the church has replaced Israel, which is always my pushback to people who say that. They, they always want the blessings of the replacement of Israel. They don't want the curses as well. But anyway, it's a let you figure that out. But uh, So I do believe God's gonna somehow bring Israel to himself. It's the apple of his eye. And so we wanna pray for Israel, but we also wanna pray for the Middle East because there are many men and women in the Middle East in Iran, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, who need Jesus as well, amen? Including the nation of Israel as well. So we'll get back into Revelation. I was sitting there last night thinking, boy, with everything going on in the Middle East, it sure would be nice to be right in the middle of a sermon series in, Re oh, we are, by the way, right? We are, yeah. So next week, we'll be back there. Today, what I wanna do is this. I wanna show us where we believe after about two years of praying, where God is leading us for the next 5, 10, 20 years as a church. And it's gonna be a lot to handle, a lot to take in. And you're gonna leave saying, man, that's a God-sized vision. And I want you to leave saying, we serve a big God who can handle our big prayers, amen? And so if you have a Bible, turn with me to Acts chapter one, and I'll frame our time together with this passage. And I'll show you how relevant it, relevant it is to us today because they were asking the exact same question you're asking when you started coming to Long Hollow when you heard the pastor was preaching on Revelation. Well, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Verse six, chapter one. We like to say word when you're there, so when, you work, when you're there, you can say word. The word of the Lord. So when the disciples and Jesus had come together, they asked him, now this is right before he's gonna ascend into heaven after the death, after resurrection, uh, he's about to go to heaven, and they ask him one last question. This is it. They got one question. All right, who's going to ask it? P guess who Peter's like, I got it. I don't know, but Peter probably said, I got it. Here's the question. Lord, are you restoring the kingdom to Israel at this time? What they're asking is this. It's the same question you asked when you came to the Revelation series. Are, are you coming back? And if you are, when? And is it now? And are you gonna set up the peace for Israel, the shalom for the nation? Are you gonna destroy the enemies and decimate the enemies? And by the way, we wanna know, are we gonna suffer seven years of tribulation or we're gonna suffer three and a half years of tribulation or hope to God we suffer no tribulation? How many people show of hands? That's your question in Revelation. Raise your hand. If you're not, you're lying, okay? Because that's what we wanna know, right? Like, what are we gonna suffer? And Jesus tells them, watch this, really crazy. Jesus said to them, hang on, John the Apostle is about to write a book about, that's not, that's not what he says, right? He knows that, but that's not what he says. Notice what he says. It is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority. Here's what he's saying. Don't be so heavenly minded that you're of no earthly good. You could be so rapture ready that you're no evangelistically useful today. What he's saying is, yes, it's gonna happen, but don't have this preoccupation with the return of me. Here's what I want you to do in the meantime. Verse eight, you will receive power. Dunamis, same word we get dynamite from today. Although they didn't have dynamite back then, but you get the idea. You receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, circle this in your Bible, underline, Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, which is a group, and to the ends of the earth. So I want you to think in three categories, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Now you're gonna love this. Did you know that when Luke the doctor wrote the book of Acts, he divided the book of Acts into three sections based on these three Areas. Did you know this? This is how he writes the book. In fact, it's a progression of the gospel going to the world. Notice this, if you're taking notes. Right in the margin, one through seven, chapters one through seven, in Acts, 
are all about Jerusalem. John and Peter get arrested for healing a lame man. John and Peter go to court in Jerusalem, Acts chapter four. John and Peter get pushed back by the religious leaders. Peter gets a vision from heaven to go to the Gentile. All happens in Jerusalem. Chapters eight through 12, you see a shift to Judea and Samaria. Now they're gonna take the gospel there. And then in chapter 13, we meet a man named Paul who pushes the boat out into the Mediterranean Sea not to come back, why? Because he's heading to the end of the earth with the gospel, isn't that cool? So the whole book of Acts is written that way. What I wanna do today is this. I wanna use that parameter or those parameters to give us a picture of where we're going. Here's how it's gonna work. There are three categories, three areas. Number one is this. Where are we now, okay? Number two is, where are we heading? And number three is, what, what you really wanna get to is, how are we gonna get there, okay? Where are we now? Where are we heading? How are we going to get there? Here's where we are. Now, let me just, let me just kind of frame this. If you've been at Long Hollow for any length of time, you know that we rarely talk about numbers here. We don't boast a lot in numbers publicly, and not because we don't appreciate numbers. Frankly, part of it is I know my own propensity as a person to try to take credit for that, and so that's part of it. You know, like, hey, I did that, so that's part of it. But number two, and more importantly, I don't want you to see the numbers and say that's the only way we measure success at Long Hollow, okay? So that's one of the reasons. Now, it is good to look at numbers because every number we know has a meaning. And so I'm gonna show you some numbers here, but I want you to see beyond the numbers because every one of the numbers represents a person, person changed by Christ, a person who's been transformed by the gospel, a person like you, because obviously you're a part of the numbers. Before I show you the numbers, I'll just tell you a history of my time at Long Hollow. When I came to Long Hollow in 2015, I was following a beloved pastor who was here for 17 years, Pastor David Landreth, some of you were here, uh, was here for 17 years. And I just described David for those who don't know. David Landreth's superpower was he could meet you one time, and I met him one time and I left the same way you did. You can meet him one time and you left feeling like he was your best friend in all of the world. Like you felt like, man, David knew me and I knew David. He had that superpower. In addition to that, David could rally the troops to charge hell with a water pistol, even though you refute. Like, that's the kind of charisma he had, a great communicator, great teacher of the word. Uh, so following that would have been tough, but following someone who was here for 17 years, beloved, put another dynamic, and here's how, here's how I explain it. When you sit under a pastor for a long time, and for those who've been here at Long Hollow for nine years, this year is nine years for us, you're gonna start hearing the voice of God through the dialect of your pastor. Meaning, when you sit under a pastor like David for 17 years, God's voice comes through his colloquialism, expressions, the way he speaks. When, that, when he moves, whether he leaves or in David's case, he passed, when a new pastor comes in, it's like a stepdad moving in the home and you're not used to his voice because it doesn't sound like your father. And so naturally, people don't fit. I mean, I get it, some people didn't fit. And, over time, people, and some of you were part of that, you started to leave the church. And over that time, the first four years, 2015, 2019, the church slowly declined. I tell people I was really good at growing the church from about 65, 6,800, uh, back down to 4,000. I was really good in those four years. I knew how to ram it straight to the ground. Uh, and, and mainly because, here's the deal, I felt the weight that I was leading this church. Like I had to lead this church. It was all upon me. And then COVID comes. And COVID came for a lot of us and, and it was packaged in a gift and a curse or, or a challenge and a blessing. Because for a lot of us, COVID was challenging. We're disconnected, we're working from home, we, we're not seeing people. But, but for all of us, on the other end, there was a blessing in COVID. And for me, it was the same way. Now, I want you to know this. What COVID did for the North American church was this. It gave the North American church a national test on disciple making, and by and large, and I put us in this category too, by and large, the North American church flunked the test. Here's what I mean. We as pastors and leaders assume that you, our people, 
would know how to uh, take responsibility for your faith separate and apart from the church. Meaning, we assume that when COVID happened, you knew how to hear from God. You knew how to pray. You understood how to read the Bible for yourself. You knew the responsibility of discipling your family and investing in your spouse and leading those in your home and worshiping together and following the will of God. But what we found out shortly thereafter, that it was that way for a couple weeks and then it fell by the wayside. Think of COVID, remember those first two weeks? You're on your couch that Sunday, first Sunday morning, you remember it, you're gonna watch pastor, you got your phone out, you're gonna post to Instagram a picture with the hashtag, pancakes and preaching with Pastor Robbie, right? And everybody, everybody's looking, right? It's awesome, we all did it. That lasted about what? About two weeks, about two weeks, right? And then at two week mark, what you're doing, like I was doing is, you can't get anybody to sit and watch the sermon, so you start threatening. Y'all better get in here now or, or y'all gonna be in trouble. At least, at least that was my home, right? Everybody with me, like, you better sit there. And I'm like, but dad, we don't wanna watch you. Like you're gonna watch, I don't wanna watch me either, but we can't around for that. Well, that was my home, but your home wasn't like that, right? Like you're having to threaten and punish, like we're gonna watch. And, and honestly, if you're honest, by, by the end of two months, you're not watching at all, if you're honest. You're trying to catch a sermon to check a box on the way to fish or catch a sermon to check a box on the way to, way to work, but we're no longer worshiping at a, as a family. We're no longer, longer discipling our community. So here's what we, we did, we had to take a step back. And as a staff, we began to evaluate even our disciple-making process. And here's what we found out. We did not wanna build a system where some people participate sometime. We wanted to create a church where everybody, all people, participate all the time. Not at the building of Long Hollow, Hendersonville, but where you live, work, and play. And it happened to me, I told you it was a blessing and a curse. The blessing for COVID was, the 10 month season on the porch. I'm not gonna relive that, you've heard me say it, but 10 months of sitting with the Lord where the Holy Spirit, you know, he has a great way of doing this. He puts his finger on the exact pulse of the problem of your life, if you ask him, and he began to speak to me and show me ways in which I was arrogant myself. I didn't even know it, he was showing me. Robbie, you, you, you rely on yourself way too much. You always try to take credit for me. The one that got me was the jealousy in my own heart. I wouldn't admit it, but, but I would think about it. And lovingly, the Lord showed me, Robbie, the, the, the reason revival's not coming to Long Hollow as a church is because you are the blood clot to that. And so I tell people, God had to change me before he started to change our church and our, and, and our environment here and our staff. And so in 2021, some of you were here, we experienced what I call no less than a God sent revival. I mean, it was God. Remember, I knew how to decline a church for four years, but what happened was God began to show me, this isn't about you. You don't have to feel the responsibility. You let me lead the church and I'll show you what can happen. And we experienced that collectively as a church. And what we experienced, listen, is only the Lord. In that year alone, 21, it, the December, it happened starting in December, about 200 people baptized. And then after that, another 1,300. In one year, you're gonna love this. This is only the Lord. We witnessed 1,500 people baptized in a year. And it's a God thing, right? I mean, that's, that's only God could do that. And then last year, you know, Candy and I thought we baptized everybody in Sumner County, but apparently not. Because last year in 23, we saw almost a thousand more people baptized again. I mean, that's something, amen, that's something only God can do. And so we thank the Lord for that. Let me show you the numbers. Let me show you the snapshot of the numbers. And I have to, I have to hide, hide little pictures here. So just follow, do not put these on the, they got me last service by messing me up, by showing the board. Okay, don't worry about that, okay. This is attendance at Long Hollow. If you had 2021, it'd be around 4,000. 2020, this is average attendance at Long Hollow. So some days we have more, some days we had less. This doesn't include Easter and big events like Long Hollow Christmas. So this is an average. 2021, 4,567. That's a lot of people. 2022, 4,708. That's still a lot of people. But then notice the jump in 23. We saw 5,777, which we know the number is 777. But seriously, but I, I just saw that just now. That, seriously, all right, watch this. 2024, this is the average right now. 7,137 people. Yeah, we praise the Lord for that. Um, 
minor miracle here, but I want to point it out. I want you to see the increase in the 8 o'clock worship service. Because anybody that comes at 8, it's a miracle. I'm just <laughs> some of you know what I'm talking about. Talking about, right? When, I, when we started the eight o'clock service, Pastor Friend said, you crazy. Nobody's gonna come at eight. Christians don't even wake up to go to eight. Right? No offense to our eight o'clock crowd, but watch this. 2021, 636. Two years ago, 714. 960, eight o'clock. Right now, we're averaging 1,205 people at eight o'clock. The church has almost doubled at eight uh, in three years. This one's really cool. Long Hollow kids or preschool. Kids who are coming to Long Hollow, and this is the coolest because this is where we get to invest in legacies. This is where we get to change a culture in a future, right? So kids at Long Hollow, 2021, 687. 22, 735, 23, 854. Look at this, over 1,030. That's almost a mega church of kids, right? I mean, it's like, it's like unbelievable what the Lord is doing. And a lot of those are your children as well. And we think it's an honor uh, to, to reach those students. Uh, let me show you our Easter attendance. And this is the one, do not put this on the screen, please. They got me last Thursday. All right, so I said, this is really just cool. 2021, 7,849. Now, let me just tell you, let me just, don't put this on the screen. <laughs> let me just tell you what this number means so you know, okay? Just follow me. This, this is what we talk about as pastors internally. This Easter number is who your church is. Because what happens is, you know, you, some of you can't come every week, you come every other week, you come every three weeks, you come once a month, you watch online, you worship. So we, we don't know, you know, and whatever reason you worship, we don't know the number. But on Easter, everybody who says, I go to Long Hollow, comes. So that's how it works. So, so this is who your church is, right? In a sense. So, okay, end of, end of, the, uh, end of the disclaimer. Okay, 7,849, that's a lot of people. Let me put that in perspective. My first church was 65 people. On Easter, we had a high number that year. I think we had 98 that first Steve. Boy, it was a big day. It's a, yeah, thanks, son. Uh, <laughs> you weren't even born. But, uh, but here's the deal, watch this, watch this. Um, I say that to say, people come to Long Hollow all the time and they say, man, this is a big church. I'm like, yeah, big for me too. But it's only as big as you allow it, amen? Only as big as you allow it. Uh, 7,849. Two years ago, 10,160, amazing. Last year, 11,481, this uh, two weeks ago, 14,306 people. It's almost 3,000 more people. Again, did I mention this is something only, you knew what I did when I was leading, right? This is like only God. Now this is the Easter offering, final, because the thing about offerings is that, I always say this, resources follow revival. And when God revives your heart, you're more generous to give. Why? Because, because you're all in. And here's the thing, I, we used to say, let me do it again, sorry. We used to say, we used to say, <laughs> it's very awkward by the way, but we used to say this line, and I told our staff we're not gonna say this anymore. We used to say, hey, this is an offering opportunity for you to give to the church if you're a member. But if you're a guest, don't feel the pressure. You've heard us say this before. But, but the sad reality is, some of you folk been coming for like years as guests. Can I get an amen? <laughs> I'm like, I ain't gonna join, so I don't have to give. Okay, but here's the thing. That's between you and the Lord. But here's the thing. Uh, we want you to participate and become family, right? Like whether you are a member or not, if, you, if Long Hall is your home, you're family, right? And I think that's what we saw with this offering, okay? Let me hold it. Sorry. 760, now, now watch this, the, the numbers are pretty consistent. 763 and 21, 774, 22, 769 and 23, 1.1 million and 39,715 dollars. Yeah, so we just, we thank the Lord. Uh, let me say it, God is doing abundantly more than we can ask, think, or imagine according to the power that's at work within us. Now, thankfully, before this started to go this way, uh, our team in 2021 began to pray and seek the Lord for a fresh vision, fresh mission, fresh strategy that empowers our people, not us, we're not doing the ministry, that empowers our people, you, to live out, you've heard this before, live out your God-given calling as you follow Jesus and make disciples every day where you live, work, and play. If someone were to ask you, 
What is it about Long Hollow? Why are you at Long Hollow? Why is it different? Here's your answer. Because Long Hollow's success is not how effective Robbie does the ministry or the staff does the ministry. There's only a few of us. What makes our church, at least we're trying, different, I would say, is that we're successful when you're doing what God has uniquely called and created you to do that nobody on the planet can do but you. And we think that's God honoring. We think that's a win, right? So we can't do this alone. We didn't even get here alone, I would say. Uh, just so you know, we have two teams at Long Hollow. We have a lot of teams, but two of the main teams that really seek the Lord and, and really pray and press in for where are we going. One of those is the MAC team. You've heard this, and this will show you how Long Hollow operates. And the other is the lead team. The MAC team consists of four lay leaders in our church who are giving us kind of real-time feedback from the ground, from the pew, from the community of what's going on, and then three leaders or staff members on our, our, our pastoral staff team. I wanna introduce the MAC because these are people you can go to, husbands, wives, that you can ask questions and they're a part of the process. Think of it like elders, board of directors, kind of. First one is Baron and Melanie Lowe. Baron actually was on the search team that found me eight and a half years ago, uh, and he stayed, which is a, it's a miracle. For but anyway, no, Baron's still here. Baron's a gem to our team. The second person is Alan and Mitzi Lindsay. Alan has been here for years and years. In fact, when the church divided uh, years ago, you heard me tell the story, uh, Alan actually stepped in and was the student pastor for a while, which is really cool. Uh, the third person is uh, two new people we added this year, Daniel Pallord and Kim. Daniel has been in our church a number of years, really gifted in the business world, hard for ministry, both of them. And then finally, last but not least, Charlie Haygood, Charles Haygood, Charlie and Terry, my neighbors, and uh, Charlie and David were very good friends for years. Charlie just crazy gifted in the business world. That makes up the Mac, okay? The leadership team, you hear me talk about the lead team. I decided to expand the team to make it bigger in order to hear more from uh, the church. So think of the lead team as everybody in the church reports under them some form of fashion. The first one is, I told you, we added a woman to the leadership team to give counsel and insight about the church, and that is Julie Woodruff. So anybody know Julie? Yeah, Julie Woodruff. Uh, Julie and Sid Woodruff, Julie's been a gift to our to our team, uh, Jeff Borton and Jen. Jeff has been here just about as long as I've been here. Poor Jeff, he doesn't get any. Yeah. Uh, Jeff and Jen um, have been, Jeff, so Julie's over discipleship, all things groups. Jeff and Jen, uh, Jeff's over family ministry, students, preschool, kids, young adults. Uh, the third person is Andy Williams, who you see every week on the platform, Andy and Kristen. Uh, Williams, Andy's All Things Creative, uh, our Easter production, that's Andy and his team. Social media, Andy and his team. Worship every week, Andy and his team. Uh, Abraham Cremines is the newest one in Kerry. Abraham, yeah, we praise God for Abraham. He's over all of our member care, recovery, addiction, counseling. Uh, he's only been here about a year, but Abraham has been connected with Replicate, our discipleship ministry for over a decade. Uh, last but not least, Mr. Russell Irwin, Russell and Darlene Irwin, yeah. Uh, Russell is basically a pastor to the, to the staff. Russell and Darlene um, have served in ministry for a year. Russell's been a pastor at multiple churches, but Russell's over development of staff, equipping center, uh, and, and the like. Russell actually is kind of a pastor to me uh, and has been a great friend to me. And last but not least, me, uh, myself, and Candy, Oh, wow, they have it. They have it. Okay. The last three services, I would look to a blank screen. I guess the Lord was saying it ain't about you, which is true. It's not about me. But Candy, obviously, Regan Ryder uh, as well. And I, and I put those pictures up. Why? Because I want you to pray for us. Okay? We, we need prayer and direction and wisdom. Because here's the vision the Lord put on our heart. 55,000 legacies by the year 2035. Now, what does that mean? That means here's where we're going. Number two, where are we going? The Lord put in my heart that, uh, in our team, that over the next 11 years, we believe Long Hollow, you, me as a church, we're gonna reach 55,000 legacies. We're gonna change families, we're gonna change generations, and we're gonna do that in a way of focusing on three areas. Number one is family discipleship. 
Number two is personal impact where you live, work, work, and play. And number three is gonna be restoration. Uh, it's gonna be recovery. It's gonna be recidivism, going back to prison, lowering that rate. It's gonna be marriages restored, parents and children restored. So a restoration ministry. Here's a way to think of it. You can take a picture of the screen if you want. But it's four different areas that we're passionate about. The first one is, and we'll come back to this, we, and they all kind of dovetail. So the first one is we're praying for 25,000 people worshiping with us at Long Hollow, okay, in person and online. 15,000 lives restored, so these are uh, guys out of prison not going back, people on addiction recovered, marriages restored, families restored, and then families discipled. Imagine a community where 10,000 families take discipleship seriously in the home. Do you think that would have an impact in Sumner County in the world? I think it would too. And then finally, 5,000 circles reached. A circle is showing you, and this is really probably the coolest of all of them, that where you work is not just a place you punch a time clock, but the ministry you have is based on the employment you take up every week. So you're not there just to check in and check out. You're there because that is your mission field. And wherever it is, God has called you and placed you there, not by accident, to reach the people that work with you, to mobilize you to do ministry right, right where you are. 55,000 by the year 2035. So how are we gonna get there? Because that's what you wanna know, okay? When I began to pray about this, the number 25,000 really kind of stood out. And I began to ask the Lord, there's no way, like how are we gonna do this? We definitely can't do it here at 3031 Long Hollow Pike because we don't have the space. You saw the numbers and we're already pressed and pressured right now. And so I have a mentor I meet with. I have two actually every month. One of them is an older, wise pastor from the West Coast and he meets with me once a month and we began to talk and I said, well, what do I do? He said, you only have two options, that's it. Either A, you expand the current campus you're at or B, you launch what, what he said we call multi-site campuses all over the, the community. When he said multi-site, I stopped him right away. I said, we don't use that word at Long Hollow. Uh, let me just stop. We tried that, I told him, and it didn't work as effective as we thought, and it's something we did in the past and moved away from. And he said, well, just pray about it. So I went back to the team, and I began to pray with our team, and then we said, hey, let's just, let's just see what's out there. Let's do some R&D. So we started looking at churches that had an effective multi-site strategy that was reaching people. And here's what we found. There were different ways to do multi-site, very different than what we did. And we started to get excited really early on. And as our team began to explore this, we started to say, maybe the Lord's opening up the door for us to go back and do multi-site campuses. Now, let me just pull over and park. Because even when I mention that word multi-site, some of you in here, it brings back all the emotions of the previous campuses we had. When I first got to Long Hollow, we had this site and four other sites. And some of you were a part of those sites. And I wanna just say this to you personally from me to you, and I want you to hear this. Did we make mistakes with those campuses in the past? Yes. What I... Would I have done things differently now as I look back to the past? Yes. Did we learn a bunch of lessons to go forward in the future that we feel like we can have an effective strategy? Absolutely, that, that, that's what we've learned. And some of you, it really brings up these raw emotions. Here's why, because you invested your life in one of these campuses. You invested your time and your effort and your energy and your blood and your sweat and your tears to get this thing off the ground and when we close the campus and shut the campus down or launch the campus, I've learned this from countless people, watch this. What you've told me is it felt like a death. It felt like a divorce. And I mean, I get it. I've talked to people over the last three years, countless people who have been emotional and wept on the phone with me and you say, hey, it feels like a divorce. So I, I, want, you to, I want you to hear me. It breaks my heart to hear that. I even talked to two people this week and it just breaks my heart, all these emotions. If you're at one of those campuses, if you're even watching online, I, I just wanna speak this and, and I genuinely mean this. If you've been hurt by the closing of a campus in the past, I take responsibility and I ask you to forgive me, I'm sorry. 
We can't change the past. I wish I could do things differently. We can't. But I'm going to ask you to move forward with us as we attempt to change the future together. And at the end of the day, here's, here's where the Lord got me. I began to pray about these campuses. And man, I'd wake up in the middle of the night with anxiety. I was like, Lord, I said we wouldn't do this. Why are you leading this? And, you know, what are people gonna think of me? I've already put myself out there. People, and the Lord began to remind me real, real quickly. Robbie, let me remind you. This is not about you. It's not about your plan. It's not even about you saving face. The reason I'm leading you to do this is because we need to do whatever it takes to take the gospel to people in Gallatin. Whatever it takes, even if it means you're gonna be criticized or people are gonna get mad, you need to do that because people are too important, amen? And I want you to know, here's the driving, if you take nothing else, this is the driving reason we are launching campuses again, to reach lost people through evangelism. And here's how it works. Most people today, most people, will not drive more than 30 minutes to a church for worship, okay? Now, I know even saying that now to a group this size, some of you are saying, that ain't me. We drove more than 30 minutes today. Raise the hands, raise them high. Who drove more than 30 minutes to come to church at Long Hollow today? Okay, praise the Lord. Some of you, I know y'all drove from Kansas City, but anyway, that's different. Okay, let's give the Lord a hand, yeah. Praise the Lord. <coughs> some of you won't, you're driving, we love that. But you know, if you're honest, your neighbor next door is probably not gonna make the drive. You know, and we realize that after about 25, 30 minutes, evangelism breaks down because they will not drive to a church 30 minutes away, but they may go to a church five minutes down the street, right? And our team was blown away because we said, all right, let's just see where our people are driving from to Long Hollow Hendersonville. I'm gonna show you a map. This is, this is all of Long Hollow. This is really crazy to think about, but this is, and it goes bigger than that, but for space. Um, this is Hendersonville, okay, watch this. This is where people are, these are not, this is not like a one-time person show. These are people who would be engaged at Long Hollow. This is the peninsula right here, look at all the people here. Boy, if we just had a bridge to Mount Juliet, can I get an amen? <laughs> Somebody do that, huh? Anyway, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, but here's the deal, look, you have all these people in Peninsula, you have all of East Nashville, you go down into Nashville, you have this way toward White House and Millersville and Ridgetop and Greenbrier and Springfield, I mean, you have all the way up here to Kentucky, Cottontail, now watch this, Gallatin, Castilian Springs, Portland, Westmoreland, but then we said, okay, what about the existing campus, you ready for this? Some of you don't even know this. What about the existing campus that we already own right now, which is 11 acres of a property with 20 something thousand square feet of building under roof that we already own right now, which is about 30 minutes away from here on Hartsville Pike in Gallatin. Let's do a heat map to see where our people are driving from and this is what we have. So this is Gallatin. This is a 20 minute uh, range of where people are from. And within that 20 minute mile radius, 20 minutes, Guess how many people live within 20 minutes of that campus? 1,500, okay? 1,500. Now, here's what I want you to hear. We're not launching this campus to alleviate space here at Hendersonville. That is not why we're launching. We're launching this campus with a missional focus to reach people who aren't already coming to church anywhere. I want you to hear this, and if people ask you, you need to say, I heard Robbie say this. We are not trying to siphon people from other churches in Gallatin. There are way too many lost people to reach right now that we need, listen to me, 10 more churches like this to reach all the people in Gallatin who aren't serving the Lord, amen? Now here's what's crazy, you're gonna love this. Guess how many homes right now have applied for permits to build within 20 minutes of this campus? Over 10 thousand homes coming in right now. And so we started asking the Lord, okay, Lord, are you in this? And we were reminded that for those who are here, we put this campus on the market three years ago to sell. And it's an amazing place. You would think like somebody would have scooped that thing up right away. 11 acres, Gallatin, where all the grow's coming. And we haven't sold it. And as I sat with the Lord a couple months ago, our Mac team said, maybe the Lord is telling us something. What is it? Long Hollow is not done with ministry and Gallatin just yet. 
And we are passionate about this for one driving reason. Forget all other ones, here's the driving reason. This is what keeps me up at night. Students, you're gonna, you're gonna, I want you to hear me. Students, why? Because, our, listen, and I would say this, our student ministry right now, in my, I know I'm biased, is one of the best in America. I'm just telling you that. It's one of the best in America. And it's not because it's ours. These men and women, they, they, they lead the ministry, they learn, they grow, they're, they're teachable, they're humble. I mean, what God's doing here is just unbelievable. And they are doing their best, hear me, to reach every school in Sumner County. We're in Hendersonville, we're in Beach, we're in Station Camp, we're at Liberty Creek, but here's the facts. While we have done an amazing job in the west side of Gallatin and even in Hendersonville, we have little to no impact in Gallatin. Very few, and I want you to hear my heart on this, very few students, if any, come on Wednesday night from Gallatin High School, from Rucker Middle, from Schaefer Middle, or from Rucker, from Schaefer Middle, from Howard, just to name a few. And here's why, and I get it. Parents come on, parents from this area, come on, on Sunday, which is awesome, but it's very difficult to make that long drive back on Wednesday night. I get it, I've got kids too. It's very difficult, we have activities too. So to drive across town is harder than if you could drive down the street. Two big differences I wanna take away, uh, you to take away. Cause some of you are like, ah, I'm still a little skeptical. Really, is it gonna be different? Here are the two things I would synthesize it this way. In the past, our strategy predominantly was this. A dying or plateaued or declining church would call Long Hollow. Hey, we don't have any money, we're losing members, whatever, would you help us? And we would step in, and here's what would happen. We would take the existing congregation, 50 to 100, and we would send two to 300 from Hendersonville, and we would try to merge visions with when you have two visions, you have what's called division, and you have no vision. Did you know that? You know what division is? Two visions at once. They don't work. And I'm not blaming it all on that, but that was part of it. What we're doing now, I want you to hear this. We're moving in there with a fresh mission, mission, fresh vision to engage the community to move forward. And here's the big difference. This campus will be contextualized to the community to tailor fit the needs of Gallatin. In the past, we'd say, we don't do that at Hendersonville. We can't do that at Gallatin. That's not the right answer. Gallatin is different than Hendersonville and it needs to look like the community. It doesn't need to be Long Hollow Hendersonville light. Why? That makes everybody mad. And for those who are at the campus know what I'm talking about. Again, we're not trying to reach people from other churches. We have too many lost people to reach that are not going to church as well. Here's the second thing. I'm not gonna guilt you, you need to hear me say this, because some of you are like, well, I live right here, but I like going to Hendersonville. Well, keep coming to Hendersonville. I like seeing you too, amen? Uh, you come here, you have my word. We will never guilt you to go anywhere where God hasn't called you. So if you wanna drive here from Kentucky, praise God, drive here from Kentucky. But if you have a passion to reach the community of Gallatin, and by the way, this will be the first of many prayerfully campuses around the community, but if you have a passion to reach Gallatin, to reach the students, to reach the community who wouldn't otherwise drive, we want you to pray about coming to our vision meeting uh, in a few weeks. Here, uh, here's the second thing I want you to leave with. Our posture, different than the past, is to listen now and to learn. We didn't have, I didn't have people on the ground one, maybe they didn't trust me. Number two, maybe they didn't like me. I don't know, maybe I didn't know them. But I didn't have real-time feedback from people on the ground who were telling me how to make the campus better. What we have now is that. And so what we're gonna do is listen and learn uh, in the process. We've already hired our campus pastor last month because we knew we had to get ahead of this. So we just hired Robbie Ryan and Christy, yeah, Robbie and Christy Ryan. Uh, Robbie and Christy have been a part of our church for years and years. Robbie is gonna be our campus pastor. And we've also hired, or actually gonna move two people already on Long Hollow staff to go start this team at Gallatin. And again, these are the best of the best we got. Garrett Hopkins, uh, yeah. Uh, Mark, uh, Mark's son, Valerie's son, Garrett, who's all-star student. And then Cody Boschman, who already does our kids ministry here. Uh, Cody as well, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we're sending them as a team to gather you as a launch team. 
So they're gonna put together a launch team, they're gonna put together people who are passionate about reaching the community in the summer and in the fall. Here's what we're gonna do. In the meantime, we're gonna give the entire campus a facelift. It's not gonna look the same. When you drive on Gallatin, it's gonna be a whole new place from the outside to show people this is not going back to the past. This is a new thing to reach the community in a way maybe we've never reached before, and we're praying about launching January of 2025. So we're pretty fired up, as you can imagine, uh, about that. Now, uh, if, you, if you're interested for more information, we're having a vision meeting. I'll be there, others, uh, Wednesday night, April 24th at the Gallatin campus. Now, let me just, just give you a, a second to pause. Everybody can't go there. The campus holds about 320. We can't fit everybody. So if you're saying, oh, I'd like to hear about this campus, we, you can't go, we love you. You go to a different job. This is for people who say, I live in the community and I wanna reach Gallatin. I'm not committing yet, but I wanna hear more about it. Or I wanna be on the launch team. April 27th, next Wednesday, not this, next Wednesday, six o'clock, vision meeting. Here's a, here's a QR code for you to download. But it's not just local. Here's what's cool. We've been reaching people nationally and globally. Our online ministry right now, this is crazy, but we reach on, on average every Sunday about six to 7,000 people worship with us online from all over the country. Some of you are doing that right now. In addition to that, some are joining Long Hollow from TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or YouTube where they see clips or memes or shots and then they come to Long Hollow. So what we're trying to figure out is, what does a digital ministry look like in the 21st century? And if you've looked online or talked to people, nobody really knows. Andrew Bolton is our digital pastor. He is currently writing a process to move someone from a first time attender who watches a sermon through a five step process of being a fully functioning local site in that community and that city where they are. Here's an example. Uh, you heard me talk about our New York uh, local site. Our, our, our New York site was started by a couple in Gallatin who was a part of Long Hollow. They moved to upstate New York where their fam they knew no Christians. It was just the couple. Their family were far from the Lord. They, didn't, they hadn't surrendered to Christ yet. So they decided to start inviting family members into the home to watch Long Hollow, which they did. And shortly thereafter, more people started coming and more people, and then they outgrew the home. So they went to a local church and said, hey, can we, can we, out of our own dime, rent space to house Long Hollow and show the worship and show the sermon? And then can we afterward do life groups in the, in the church? And can we have a kid space for our kids to do kids ministry, which we provided them all the stuff we do, to which they did. Easter Sunday, that church in upstate New York, guess, guess, guess how many people stood up for salvation on Easter Sunday? It's crazy. 12 people out of a worship service of 36. Right, out of 36, 12 people stood up. You ready for this? Last week on the testimony, eight more people stood up. So basically half the church gets saved. You talk about revival. It's like, like half the church turns over and they're, did I mention God's doing something abundantly beyond all that we can ask, think, or imagine, amen? But he doesn't stop there. We're, we started reaching those in the prisons. Uh, Danny Spano is focused on local ministry in the jail. Adam French is focused on ministry in the prisons all over the country, and God started blessing right away. We went on the Pando app last week, I mentioned. Your, your, your giving to the spring offering allowed us to go on the app a little early. And we broadcast the first service, which was my testimony, and in five days, it started on Monday, six days till yesterday, Guess how many people watched the sermon in five or six days? Over 12,000 people incarcerated watched the sermon and over 3,500 signed up to say, I wanna be a part of Long Hollow Worship every single week. That's only something God could do, right? I mean, it's just unbelievable. In addition to that, uh, we're getting into the prisons in California, 35 prisons in California, and we're bolstering our Walker State Prison local site that's already happening. I already mentioned this, but I'll tell you how it works. There's a guy named Doug White who used to go to my church at Brainerd in Chattanooga. Doug, unbeknownst to us, has been bringing a zip drive into the church to show the prisoners Long Hollow worship. We didn't know this. 
We contacted him and, and found out about this and we said, hey, what if we give you materials, life group, D group materials, and let's start helping these men grow in a formal way. So a couple months ago, we launched our Walker State Prison Service. Doug goes every week, he's like the campus pastor. And every week, uh, the place holds about 75, 100 guys show up, standing room only, and they worship with Long Hollow, and then they leave there and do life groups and D groups through the week for accountability and growth. Not this Friday, but next Friday, I'm going to Walker State Prison to preach live to these men. So it's gonna be, pray for me, it's gonna be, it's gonna be unbelievable. It's gonna be Johnny Cash in the Folsom Prison. I don't know, but probably not singing, no, no, no. But anyway, did I mention God was up to doing abundantly more than we can ask, think, or imagine? Uh, I know what you're thinking. That's all great, what about us? Because I go to this campus, what's happening here, right? Uh, I'll tell you a couple things. Uh, there are four things that are a barrier to growth in a church. Number one is preschool, not enough space. Number two is seats in the worship center, not enough seats. Number three is spaces in the parking lot. And number four is traffic flow getting on and off the campus. I'll give you a guess. Which one do we have challenges with? <laughs> all four of them, right? We got them all, which is a good challenge. Did I mention how successful I was the first four? Yeah, right. So these are really good challenges. And I'll just say, we are working with a long range team to plan five, 10, 15 years in the future. And I'll give you a little snippet. Uh, this could be what happens, or it could, although I'm praying, but could be what we do. Uh, and I'll let you know sh soon. We are planning on building, either redesigning or building a kids' children's space that fits the ministry philosophy of our family ministry to create an environment that helps parents better disciple their students. Because uh, we believe that parents are the chief disciple makers we wanna help. The second thing we're asking for is how do we put another thousand people in the worship center? Whether that's here or expansion or something else, because not only is that a gift, or not only is that good for our church, but it actually serves our community. Imagine a place where you don't have to sell tickets to get into the beach graduation or the station camp graduation where everybody can come. Can I get an amen? Right? Because right now we can't. And so it's a way to serve the community. In addition to that, we're trying to get another 400 parking spots on campus. Can I get an amen? Anybody with me? Yeah, parking spots. Uh, and by the way, thanks for riding the bus. If you Ride the, ride the bus. Uh, and then here's the big one, and I know you're gonna resonate with this. Wouldn't it be cool to have more education space, more equipping space, more life group space on campus, to have life groups on campus, but also a training center, a seminary, an educational facility where you can get seminary type education at Long Hollow without leaving. That's the fourth piece. And so to say I'm excited, yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. That was a staff member, by the way, but thank you. Uh, to say I'm excited is an understatement. And listen, I wanna, I wanna really tell you more because I know a little bit. Can y'all keep a secret? Can you, no, seriously, can y'all? I'll play it. Y'all know me better than I got in trouble in the past. I'm not gonna do it, okay? But you just need to know. When I get it, I will share it with you. Uh, we are praying for some of these projects. Finally, and this is the big one, uh, because if you do all these things locally but neglect the mission field, you're not fulfilling the Great Commission. Here's what we need to remember. C.T. Studd said, the light that shines the farthest from home shines the brightest at home. The light that shines the farthest shines the brightest. Because God is blessing us here, it means we can impact there. If we don't go to the nations with the gospel, we're not fulfilling the Great Commission. We are currently right now, just give you a snapshot, we are currently right now sending long hollow families, you and me, to places that are the hardest places on planet Earth. Countries like Morocco, countries like Nepal, places like Palestine, places like India where there is little to no Christian influence in the entire country. Last week, I met a pastor who came to the service from Turkey. Now, this is gonna blow your mind. The pastor came up, Jason brought him up, and we talked, and he said, hey, Pastor Robbie, let me tell you, I'm so glad to be here. Let me just put in context what you guys are experiencing. He said, basically, the number of people Long Hollow had in this building for Easter is basically the number of all of the Christians in the country of Turkey. Say that again. What we saw in person on just one weekend on Easter Sunday 
is basically the number of every Christian in Turkey. Now we're talking about the place where the seven churches are. We're talking about Colossae, we're talking about Ephesians, we're talking about Pastor John, Pastor Paul, Pastor Timothy, and here we are 2,000 years later and they have roughly 15,000 Christians in the whole country. The reason we go to the tough places is because Jesus Christ is worthy of their worship, amen? Right now, Long Hollow has mobilized, yeah, we could praise the Lord for that. Right now, Long Hollow has mobilized 28 people to be missionaries sent from our church. We are currently, this is cool, we are currently planting churches with pastors right now actively in 30 countries around the country, not only, in Amer- not, not only there, but also in America. We have planted since I've been here, or, or planted since the beginning of Long Hollow, 12 churches domestically, get this, we have planted 10 since 2018, 10. And we have three more in the pipeline. Again, I'm not boasting to me, boasting to my team, boasting in the Lord, it's only something God can do. Right now we're planting a church in San Diego, Madison, Wisconsin, and Atlanta, Georgia, not Jordan, Georgia. Did I mention God is doing exceedingly above anything we can ask, think, or imagine, amen? I wanna close with this. I want you to hear my heart. And I'd be remiss or omiss to not say this. What you and I are experiencing, and I'm in the same boat as a lot of you, we are experiencing something today as the result of what people did before us. The faithfulness of men and women who for the past, get this, 46 years as a church, invested their time, were willing to experience change, endure things that were uncomfortable, to put blood, sweat, tears, time, talent, energy, to reach the community of Sumner County, but to reach the world with the gospel. And they sacrificed, get this, for our benefit today. What do you you mean? Follow me. Most of us in here did not pay for the seat that we're worshiping in today. I didn't. What I mean is, men and women before us gave their time and sacrificed their money and investment and their participation to provide the seat that we enjoy today. I would say most of us love the kids' ministry that our kids are a part of, but we didn't help build it, someone else did. The student ministry we love so much that impacts our kids, it was the investment and sacrifice of men and women long before us. Here's what's so cool about this vision. You and I have an opportunity to leave a legacy for people to come after us. Think about this. The vision gives you and I an opportunity to pay it forward to the next generation so that our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren, not to mention the countless others who are gonna come to faith in Jesus Christ, we get to leave a legacy, I love this, that will outlive us. And I don't know about you, that's something excited. I'm excited to get behind, amen? And so here's what I wanna do when we close. Um, I wanna ask you as a favor to commit to something for me. I'm gonna ask you to pray with us and alongside of us for the vision. It's a God, I know it's overwhelming. You're like, wow, I don't even know. I can't remember anything. That's okay, we'll talk about it in the day's end. Just know this, it's a God-sized vision, but we serve a big God who can handle big prayers. And I'm asking you, pray with me, pray alongside of me, Uh, in two areas, and before I tell you the two, we're actually launching, relaunching our Tuesday night prayer gatherings again at Long Hollow. So anybody excited about that? On Tuesday night in the chapel, uh, we'll have our prayer gatherings again um, at six o'clock, and I wanna invite you to come. We'll pray for our vision and mission and future this Tuesday. Uh, But I'm gonna ask you to pray for two things. Number one is this, pray for the leadership and the direction uh, of our church because we desperately need we, need, we need wisdom, we need protection, direction from the Lord. But also I want you to pray selfishly. Ask the Lord, what is my involvement? God, what do you want me to do to respond to where you're leading us as a church? And so I wanna pray for us now. Would you bow your head for a moment with me? And we'll just ask the Lord to do what only he can do. And it starts with us. It's not just a church vision. This is a vision for us individually and personally. And so would you bow your head as we pray? Lord, I'm thankful for a big God who can handle big prayer requests and a big vision. 
given by you. And I know, God, it's hard to even wrap our mind around all of it. But we do believe you're working, God, and we're grateful for that. I'm grateful you're working in every individual person in here. And we know, God, you wanna do more. We know that you always wanna take us to a place where we think we have trusted you enough and you, you, you cause us to step out further, not by sight, but by faith. And so God, would you help us to, to, to ask what is our part in this? How can we be a part and participate? And I pray you do it in a way where you get the glory. God, I pray when people try to explain this to others around them or at home who weren't here, uh, they wouldn't say, oh, this is a great, this is a great church or a great music ministry or man of God leading or uh, the ingenuity of a team. No, they would leave and say, man, I left and what I heard is we serve a great God. Thank you, Jesus. That's what we say today. Thank you, Jesus, for your hand of favor upon our church, Long Hollow. We love you, Lord. We ask it today in the only name we know how.